Well, we're really concerned about immigration. Actually, you have more reason to be concerned about immigration than I do, because your friends and family need to immigrate, but they can't. Now, see you're from Sudan, from the south, there's war going on, and a lot of people think that, be, that you come as, become, because you come as refugees, you could all come. But they don't let very many come, do they? Correct. The many people in your family that you cannot bring here, and yet they are in serious danger. That is correct. In a, the process are very long. You know, in a, those who live in a camp, they have to go through the the process, and the process started with the with the organization who is in the camp, like High Commissioner for Refugees, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. People are registered through that organization, and then uh, if they are accepted or qualified to be a refugees in that country. Uh, like in Sudan, like uh, for Sudanese, uh, they have to be in Egypt or in Kenya or in Uganda or Ethiopia or in Chad. Those countries, people go there because of danger facing them in Sudan. And after that, uh, they registered through the United Nations High Commission of Refugees and they followed the process. The three countries who take refugees are United States, Canada, and Australia. But uh, not everybody in the camp. You mean there's no other countries that take refugees besides those three? Those are the really countries that I know so far they take more refugees. But other countries they take when people arrive there. Oh, really? Yeah, when people arrive I there. I knew a lot of Sudanese that went to Germany. Oh, yes. But Germany, they don't take people in the camps. When people arrive in Germany, uh, they can uh, they can apply for political asylum and get a, and get it. Some people reject. So they have to be able to play the pay the airplane fare to get to Germany. That is what usually happen. But in in the, in the camps, the United States and Canada comes and takes them. Yeah, they but not very many. Not every, not not all the people. They just take people who are qualified. And how many do you think are qualified? Like out of how many people are in a camp? Ten thousand. Well, there is a lot in the camps. Uh, I never been to the camp, uh, but uh, my family live in the camp for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, any idea how many thousands of people? Well, of course, uh, there's all different camps. But what's oh typical? Yeah. The refugees, the Kakuma. In north of Kenya, my mother used to live there, and my brothers, my cousins, they lived there for many years in that camp. And there were a lot of, I don't know exactly how many, but uh, I think Google can show how many people mm. live in those years. And like say, if there's 5,000 people in a camp, and the people and the people from the United States and Canada and Australia come, take some away, do they take two or three thousand, or do they just take very you say, few? You said five thousand. Sudanese alone, they were about fifty thousand. Fifty thousand? <laughs> yes. And then uh, and add, they didn't bring add, that many refugees add, home, did add, they? You had people from Ethiopia, had people from Somalia. The camp was really uh, multi, uh, many different ethnic groupings. In that camp, in Kakuma, refugees camp. So, do they take half of them? Half of them? No. Every every year, you know, the people immigration department in America send lawyers, or uh, immigration people. They go there, and people know when they come. People who are already their names are there. Already they took interviews, and and uh, those who are they go to the interview and. Uh, those who are accepted, they get a calling letter from the United States and they, they come here. 
few. Maybe if it, if they if they interview uh, a thousand, maybe they take half of it, mm -hmm. and they come from different ethnic groups. So they might take half of how many they interview, but do they? They don't interview very many of the people in the camp, do they? No, they don't. They don't. They interview few people, and they interview people according to the time they arrive to the camp. We are in the uh, Dar el Sudan, 2722 Douglas. It's a Sudan. It's a community for Sudanese. Dar el means the house of house of Sudan. And I just wanted to explain the uh, noises from outside. There's some children playing outside and having a great time, <laughs> yelling, screaming. <laughs> yeah, most of the people who who, uh, who founded this uh, this Dar Sudan, most of them, they came as a refugee. And I am sure most of us now become a citizen of the United States. It took us a long way to become citizen. Uh, some people, uh, they uh, become citizens through nationalization and uh, some are still struggling to get it because of the language barrier. Uh, language is difficult, English is difficult for Sudanese, so it's, uh, it's a problem preventing many people to become a United States citizen. But we are trying, the Dar Sudan is trying to help people. We got classes here. Uh, like uh, every Wednesday, we got uh, classes for citizenship education, and we help people to memorize it, the civic questions and American history to 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 learn and to to be a citizen of the United States. So I'm going to ask you a controversial question. You know, Hus Hispanics, uh, there's so many of them here, and because it's so easy for well, it's not easy, but. It's possible, it's so possible for them to come here, although it's a great risk to themselves. But at least they can come here, unlike Sudanese who cannot, unless we let them, unless we put them on airplanes and bring them, they can't just cross the border. But Mexicans can, and uh, other people coming through Mexico. So we have so many, and uh, and we have an anti-immigrant movement here in the United States that doesn't want them, any of them here. But they will not, so, so, excuse me, so they will insult Hispanics. But they won't insult Sudanese because they know Sudanese are refugees. They're, they're, they're here because uh, they would die if they stayed back there, back home. And, and so, our Bible-believing Christians who are anti-immigrant would be too ashamed to criticize refugees for coming here. Uh, so, so, here's my controversial question for you. Well, if, Sudan, if Sudan were, had a border with the United States, so that you could cross the border in violation of immigration laws, Given, given the 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 violence in, in Sudan, would very many Sudanese cross the border in order to live? Yes. Number one, the Sudanese, when they come to United States, they come for uh, they don't want to die if they can help themselves. They go to the refugees camp, and then after that they follow the process to come official, legal, to the United States. And, uh, and I'm sure America cannot just say they don't want Sudanese. Uh, Ameri many people help refugees. But uh, if the border was there between Sudan and, uh, and, uh, and, and America, I'm sure many Sudanese can cross that border like Mexico. You know why? Because America is good. Is number one countries, and the economy of America is good. There is many places for people to get chances to, 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 uh, to earn the, the the dream. You can, uh, you can, uh, you you can fulfill your dream. You can fulfill your promise. If you want to be a good person, you can do it. 
So if there is a border, Sudanese can come, they can jump the border and come to the United States. Like Mexico now is a... And they, and they, wouldn't, Mexican care, and they wouldn't care about being called illegals. Well, well, you know, the point is here... Well, I mean, they would care, they but care. they would still come. They would still come because they feel America is good. You know, America is good. It's a good country. It's a good country. Everybody wants to come. But what we can do here now, if you ask me what, what we can do, we can make laws, we can change laws. And why we don't give people who are living here illegal? Because they, they live here for a long time and they get, they get children here. Why we don't give them papers? So that they can, they, they can be legal and, and, and make a law, immigration law, to bring people officially. You know, there's a lot of people listening to this description of violence in Sudan and, think, and they'll think, oh, I suppose if they're dying, we can let a few of them come because we're so good in our hearts that uh, we will sacrifice ourselves so that they can come here and live. But what I'd like to try and paint a picture is <clears throat> it's not just for the benefit of the Sudanese and other refugees and Hispanics that, they, uh, <clears throat> that we should allow them to come freely without restriction. The fact is, we're, this, this violence, the violence in Sudan and the, and the poverty in Mexico is bringing us the best quality immigrants anyone could ask for. These are people, you take, you, it, violence in Sudan is, is like, a, is like a, taking a test. Now all of the people take this test in Sudan and, and some people say, we like the violence, we want to stay here. A lot of people do like violence, right? Well, if people and like the, violence, and, why and are the people here? who want to come here and want to live don't like violence. Those are the kinds of people we want here, and that is why they do a ta they do a interviews to see who is the right person to come to the United States. People in the Mexico border, there is some people dying because of poverty. Let us do an uh, interview there and bring Well, them. wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, are they, what are they asking the interviews? The immigration, they do interview to bring right people to the United States. Well, what, what do they look for in someone? Well, <coughs> they, uh, like, uh, they want to see that person is not a member of the gang, is not a, is not a terrorist, is not a communist, is not a, is not a, a killer. Uh, yeah, somebody with a pay, face, with a love, and somebody who can come and work and help himself and help mm -hmm. his family. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, those are the, the things they want. It sounds like a good process then. Oh, yes. And then why we don't <coughs> apply that in Mexico border? Why we don't apply those? And, and why we don't call those who are illegal here and interview them and take good people from them? and give them papers. Why we just talk about illegal, illegal immigrant, illegal immigrant, and we don't find a solution for it. Now, there's something that I'm really concerned about. We've <clears throat> we're, this is Friday, this is the uh, June 24th. Now, July 1st, we have a meeting. Uh, Lori Chester is an immigration attorney. She's coming to speak. <clears throat> Now, I've talked to Simon Conway. He's the WHO, uh, the new radio talk show host. He said he would be willing to come talk to a, 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 a meeting like this. So I'm waiting to find out if he's able to come to this meeting. I don't know that yet. But my concern is, after we have opportunities like this, will people come? Well, people, do people care enough to come and take, and take your opportun opportunities? It, it seems like it's helping people was never easy. I mean, even God sent, sent uh, all kinds of offers of how to live and how to have all your prayers answered and blessings and everything, and yet people turn him away. So we should expect that... Uh, our help is going to be 
refused by many of the people who most need it. So, how, what can we do to uh, motivate people to move towards a better life? You know, the many people in a, uh, in a Sudanese community, many people are suffering. Do you know why? Because of uh, a lot of pressure of life. First, the trauma of, of the world. Trauma is living inside many people. Hmm. Yeah. Many people are facing a lot of difficulties. And uh, life itself here, uh, many people don't speak English very good. And, uh, and they work in uh, some uh, certain areas in the, in the state, not the city, in the whole state. And also, those who get degrees back home, they still they work in their hands. So you see the challenging here. You don't have your, nobody consider your education here. Here, this is one of the bad thing here. You see the, the refugees are really facing difficulties. And, uh, but, but the good thing here, people are happy because nobody intimidating. Nobody intimidating anybody. Mm -hmm. You are free here, and you can you can you can you can do whatever you want. You can go to school. If there is a job, you can work. And many people are depending. But the pressure of life itself is difficult. Uh, it's just just an exact illustration of what. Yeah, that is different for, for uh, well, viewers that just want to take our freedoms for granted. Uh, I, I'm just remembering something you told me that. Uh, see here, if you get educated. You have influence, and like it could, if you're a college professor, why uh, people honor you, and you and you're safe. You can live in safe places, and you don't have to worry about terrorists. Uh, but in Sudan, a, a college professor is uh, vulnerable to a young man with a gun. <laughs> Yeah, there is a tribal, tribal conflict. A, a young man with a gun can humiliate a professor. Exactly, what is happening? And, and, and here, if a young man tries to do that, why the young man will have to watch out for everyone around who will try to stop him. But there, it's more normal, isn't it? The, yes, because the, if you see the gun, there is a lot of gun outside there in the community, in Sudan. There is a lot of gain here, but it's controlling by the law. You, you, you see, the, the gain there is no law for gain, you know. And uh, if people don't want you, they say go back to your state, go back to your uh, your uh, your city. If you like, uh, in our in our in in Bor, my my state, my jungle is my state. Our cattle, the Equatorians don't want our cattle. Said. The Dinka board should have to go back to 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 board with their cattle. Instead of making a law about cattle, so that they can take care of of that uh, when the cattle uh, uh, eat cattle. somebody. <coughs> yeah. It's it's cattle singular. Cattle is, is cattle. plural. Cattle. It's many yeah. cows. Yeah, many cow cattle. Uh, just to explain for the viewers. Cattle to a Sudanese is like uh, a bank account to an American. Uh, there, there's very little, there's very little wealth in Sudan, and so if you own a cow, why, you're 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 very very fortunate. The Dinka, the Nuer, the Murule, all the other, all these ethnic, all these Nilotic tribes, they don't have bank account. So your uh, your livestock cattle are your bank account. So if somebody come and take your cattle, it, that person robbed your your bank account. Yeah, you even have to have so many cows in order to get married. So it's it's pretty serious. Oh yeah, the cattle are used for all lives. Yes. Well, one of the most difficult challenges facing uh, immigrants trying to work together, or really Americans, is the uh, conflict between Muslims and Christians. 
And I, I made up a statement here. And so what I like to do is I'll read a little bit of English and then you translate it. Mm -hmm. And you into, translate into to Arabic. Arabic. Okay. Ar Arabic. Yeah, Arabic. Muslims and Christians must work together to repair immigration policy, but most Christians don't believe Muslims will go to heaven, and most Muslims don't believe Christians will go to heaven. The Bible and the Quran are very different, and the differences are important. Do you want me to translate it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, David Bugul, uh, المسلمين والمسيحيين يجب أن يعيشوا سوا وبعدين بقول البايبل بقول المسلمين ما ما بخش الجنة والقرآن بقول المسيحيين ما بخش الجنة out of 2.35 million Muslim Americans only 43% think Muslims in America ought to adopt American customs. 305,500 thought suicide bombings were at least sometimes justified. <clears throat> 752,000 did not have an unfavorable view of Al-Qaeda according to a, Pew, a, Pew, a poll by Pew Research. بقول هنا ال اثنين اثنين وخمسة وثلاثين اثنين وخمسة وثلاثين مليون مسلم هم فقط بقولون أن المسلمين إن أمريكا يريد يعني يريد عشان يعمل التقاليد عمل تقاليد الأمريكية و 305 ألف وخمسمية مسلم هم ال بقول بقولون أن ال أن الهجومات ال هجومات الانتحارية يعني مقبولة في وقت ال 7752000 هم بيقولوا لا حاجه لا يمكن ان يكون انا وما بيتفقون مع القاعده في افكار so how can we work together we must but how قال يجب ان يكون نحن نشتغل سوا وكيف نحن نقدر نشتغل سوا لا بد Kif. It has been possible in America since the beginning. قال حاجة ده من البداية بتاع أمريكا تكوين دولة أمريكية الناس المسلمين والمسيحيين اشتغلوا سوا. America's first war was with Muslims. The Barbary pirates based in Libya had terrorized ships from all nations, which would not pay them huge sums of tribute. Thomas Jefferson would not pay the tribute and defeated them in war. During negotiations, the Muslim ambassador quoted the same surahs of the Quran to justify their, their terrorism that terrorists quote today. Galil America مع المسلمين يعني اشتغلوا سوا في البداية ولا والملاهين الباهريين ديل كانوا في ليبيا كانوا بحاجة مصفن وأمريكا بقيادة بتاع قيادة جفري حاجمهم وشاكل معهم وفي النهاية قعدوا وعملوا الاتفاقية وجابوا 
ايات في القران الكريم اكدوا بان الارهاب البحثي النهارده كانت موجود في وكدا and yet during that same time americans elected a muslim to congress john randolph of roanoke قال في نفس الوقت ذاك المسلمين اختاروا امريكان المسلم لكونغرس واسمه كان اسم جون روناف روناف الجون روناف اختاروا وكان امريكان مسلم في وقت ذاك وقت جيفرسون in martin luther king's famous i have a dream speech he looked forward to the day a man would not be judged by the color of the skin, but, but by the content of his character. Likewise, the first Americans knew how to judge a man, not by the appearance of his doctrines, but by his heart and actions. And as a Martin Luther King, he said, 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 he يعتبروا من ال يحكموا بال مش باللون ولا بالجلد ولا بال ولا بال الشخصيه الحاجات اللي بتطلع من من داخله ولكن الانسان في امريكا سوف يحكموها بكل بال بالعقيدته وبقلبه وبعدين اعماله in the same spirit, the pilgrims brought over more people who were not members of their church than who were, and then gave them all the vote, knowing they could always be outvoted. وبعدين ال الحجاج الذين وصلوا في الأمريكا في البداية هم يعني قالوا برضو يعني كانوا يعني أعضاء في حياتهم الكنيسي الأولى وكانوا يعطي كانوا يعطي أصواتهم دائما لخدمة لخدمة الحياة العامة. Americans understood then that some Muslims can be trusted and some Christians cannot. This point is dramatically made in Romans 2. Wa American badahu yigulu fi zalik alwaqta an almuslimin yumkin an yathiqu fihim an yathiqu ilayhim wa almasihin la yathiqu la yathiqu fihim wa da maktub fi kitab al-Roma al-Romia al-Ithnan but many Christians today have forgotten how this works. <laughs> they don't know how it can be safe with many Muslim immigrants, and they're nervous about an immigration policy which Muslims support. So, how do we as a nation discern the violent from the peaceful? لكن من يعني من المسيحيين اليوم لا نسوا بأن العمل كان زمان مع المسلمين ووداء المسلمين في أمة المسيحيين يشعرون بال بال نرقص عز توتر أعصابهم لما يسمع كلمة ال السياسة الإيميجريشن عشان يعني يجلب المسيحيين إلى هنا وهكذا الـ 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 العمل مع المسلمين في قضية الهجرة يعني ممكن يدي إلى طرد أو دخل من الـ من الـ من الإرهاب أو العنف من العنف وممكن يدي إلى حياة حياة السلام حياة السلام. Well, we can't always tell the difference, of course. 
regardless of faith. But one way we can get some ideas by asking them. And just like you say that the interviewers do ask in, in the refugee camps. We already have a loyalty earth oath. We have a loyalty oath required to become a citizen. We can apply it to coming here legally. We can simply require visa and immigration applicants to pledge loyalty to our constitution and our freedoms of speech and religion and to renounce loyalty to any political or theological system that calls for violence against them. قال نحن دائما لا يمكن أن نقبل الحاجات اللي هم بشيل الإيمان برا وبعدين لكن بأي طريقة ممكن نحن نقبل العيد الأفكار اللي تماشى مع 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 الحياة السلام ونحن دائما نكون نكون أنا نكون يعني نكون نكون امينين نكون امينين لما نقول يعني لما نكون امينين لما نكون عايزين نكون مواطنين ولما نقدم في خدمه الحياه البلد ونكون ببساطه لما نقدم الفيزا نكون امينين في حاجات نحن بنقوله و ونكون نكون امينين برضو لدستورنا والحريه بتاعنا حريه الكلام وحريه الدين وبعدين نكون نرفض عدم الامانه والحاجات اللي هو من بدي حاجات السياسيه وحاجات النظريه النظام النظري اللي هو البنجدو بيجلب الى العنف ضد ضد المواطنين المهاجرين. We can take this uh, this segment here and, and make a YouTube video of just that statement. Well, you know, uh, one thing I really like about uh, sitting here with you is that. Uh, when, when we sit, and, uh, and you, you don't sit up entirely straight, we're the same height. <laughs> but when we stand up... Oh, yeah, your, your, your height is in your legs. Your legs are about two feet longer than mine. Here, just let's stand and the camera can see how much difference there is. Okay, you can let us stand. <laughs> الحياة العامة بين المسلمين والمسيحيين life between the Christian and Muslim in Sudan the war in Sudan is not a war between the Muslim and Christian it's the war between the, the, the mind people, people don't use their mind very good and that is why they are fighting it, when the war started in southern Sudan, it was a war about what, not about who. But at the end now, the people from the south, they are calling that to separate from, the, from Jalaba. Jalaba means Arab and also mean Muslim. The word Jalaba can be Arab and can be a Muslim. You cannot, def you cannot divide the country because of religion. Here in the United States, you can practice and a religion or not practice a religion. And we are really very happy here because Muslim and Christian are living together. In Sudanese community here, we got Muslim, we got Christian, and we are living very good. We don't have problem of religion in our community. We, we like one another here because we don't have politics, which is dividing us. And, you know, you don't have. Yeah, definitely uh, there is serious persecution of Christians by Muslims in Muslim countries. But it, that's not the only problem. 
because Muslims are attacking Muslims okay. in Darfur, okay. and Christians are cr attacking Christians in the South. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so it's not a it's not a religion problem. Well, it's, it's yeah, part, it's part of it. I'm, it's a politics. It's well, a politics. Well, it's a religion. It's a economic. It's, it's, it's people. It's, a, it's people it's, who are not very spiritually mature, yeah. looking for excuses to hate, yeah. to kill, exactly. to steal. Exactly. Tribalism is really an issue, and the president, Salfa Kir, called it a, a cancer. Cancer in southern Sudan is a, a tribalism. So there is a lot of things that we can talk about it, but we cannot just blame that Muslims are killing Christians uh, in Sudan. Not, not, not the way. And that is. You know, it's a really interesting read, reading the Constitution of Southern Sudan. Uh, it, it's so different than our Constitution. For one thing, our Constitution is about four or five pages, and there is about, what is it, 200 pages? Mm, a lot. Um, and, and there's all kinds of... Our Constitution is almost all about structure. Like it says, uh, we, got, uh, we, got a, we got two senators for each state, and we have representatives divided up among population, and uh, and, and the president ha has uh, two terms to, to serve. Well, actually, that was a later. Okay. Originally, originally the Constitution uh, didn't put a term limit on the president. Uh, but uh, the, the structural details like that, the Supreme Court, uh, how long they, off they, they can stay in office, and whereas the, the Southern... Sudanese constitution has vague promises. Like it says, we're going to defend everybody's human rights. Or it says, we're going to give everyone health care. And, uh, and you go, go now. <laughs> see, see, they wrote, they wrote constitution the same month they wrote it. They attacked my young and they banned 700 houses. And burn, also burn. Kaldak, they burn it down. And mm -hmm. also they went to Kaldak, they burn it down. And they kill many people. And who did that? Is the government of Southern Sudan, SPLA. In other words, the South Sudanese constitution is all promises, whereas uh, our constitution is the structure of how politicians are going to be under a lot of pressure to keep their promises. And uh, who, keep, who keep the promise? Uh, they make promises. And the president of Southern Sudan has right to move the governor, <laughs> governor of his state. She kill, uh, Obama cannot move any governor <laughs> here in America. <laughs> if you look at the, the, the constitution right now, it's built on um, the, the party, the party who will rule is we rule forever because of the power. Oh, it you has. mean you mean the Southern Sudanese Constitution? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The power. Yeah, there's no, there's no uh, second party system uh, allowed yes. under the under that constitution. No, not at all. Is the SPLA, SPLM is the one to 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 promise and the, and the to make a promises and the leader and he's the one to violate them and he's the one he's the one to punish people and he's the he's like you know the constitution you mean the man at the top yes the man at the top the constitution is like the, emergency the man, the man at the top cannot be restrained by the men below him no not at all he's the one there nobody the constitution is below him <laughs> and he's above the constitution. And he can write, rewrite the constitution yes, as he, he sees can, fit. He can change. He doesn't need to ask other people. He can change it. He can do whatever. He doesn't need to ask voters or elected representatives. And you know, you know, they, they, when they elected people, they said, "You elected this. Don't elect it that." And if you, we are in the same party, if the party chooses you, they will compel me. To 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 uh, to be uh, to to uh, to be like uh, uh, representing my own self, not representing the the party, because the party will choose somebody, not me. In America here, the people of the party they go for uh, 
primary election until the citizens choose, not the party choose people. In southern Sudan, Salfa Kir chooses his own people. Salfa. Salfa Kir, yes. Salfa Kir. Yeah, Salfa Kir. The leader, the, the leader the now of the yes. South. Yeah, he's the one. If Salfa called and said uh, Deng cannot, cannot, uh, cannot be there, and then they will, they will bring somebody else, and that person will be the one to be liked. Be liked. Uh, so th that, those are really issues happening. Yeah, David, I want to sh tell you, because last time we, we talked about the uh, referendum. A referendum happened, and uh, 98 point something voted overwhelmingly for, uh, for separation. And now the, the, the country is going to be announced on the 9th of, of July next month. Mm -hmm. If you look at it now, because I was calling for suspension, I, uh, postponing the referendum. Postponing, yeah. Postponing the referendum. Because I was looking for the South Sudan, when they went to war, they didn't want to war because they want to separate the country. And also, they, they didn't, they, didn't they, they brought Nuba Mountain, they brought people from uh, Blue Nile, and they went far to Darfur, to bring people of Darfur to the war. So people can be together and work for a regime change or to to make a new Sudan. You see now they are going to announce the country. And then the country, she is going to be announced, it's going to be a failed country. Because if you look at the, the south right now, there is war everywhere. If you go to the Lake States, Many wars. People are killing one another. How many died in January until now? If you go to Unity States, how many died in, in Unity State? Now, are you saying are you saying that the more people are dying now that the North is leaving them alone than were dying when the North was attacking? No, it's not attacking. You are dying because they are attacking one another. Yeah, that's what my question is. Now the people are killing each other. Yeah. Uh, uh, 10 or 15 years ago, the North was killing the people of the South, and the people of the South were fairly united. So are you saying that there's more people dying now from people killing each other than used to be dying from the North attacking? It never, the South never united since the war started. They were fighting one another, and they were fighting the North, too. Oh, so, so, uh, <laughs> it's like a like rotation of the Earth. The moon rotated around this, the Earth, and both of them are rotated around the sun. <laughs> you know, the war between the, <laughs> the, the war between the war between the tribes is continued for many years. It was there. They so it's killed. about the same now as it always has been. For now the it's more than that. Now more, more. more. Is more that because during the five years in Juba, people get more money. And uh, those who get money, the, the government of Southern Sudan did not use the money for uh, infrastructure, <laughs> infrastructure of the South. They, they, they steal money and they send money abroad. So money are here in the United States, money are in Europe and Australia, in those countries, in neighboring states countries like Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, they get Sudan, South Sudan money. And now, now, the people left with poverty. No roads, no school, no clean water, and the tribe are now hostile against one another. Now there's probably around 300 languages more than that. In Sudan. More than that. And, but, it, but it's not a problem and, because and there's, there's, Arabic is the... the there's most a couple of hundred tribes. Yeah, 124 tribes. 124 tribes. tribes. And, uh, but the main tribes are the uh, Nuer, Dinka, and probably Nuba. Nuba, Shulukfor. Uh, yeah, a lot. A lot of tribes. So, who, who, which tribes are these wars between? The, tr the, the war is now between the Dinka and Nuer. Nuer, uh, Dinka, Nuer and Nuer, Dinka and Dinka. 
dinka and murle murle and dinka dinka and shuluk shuluk and dinka is 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 you cannot and dinka so against another dinka huh? everywhere yeah wow. and people are dying when Susa Rice went to to Sudan he visit she visit some states Sus Susa Rice from the, the ambassador to United Nations American ambassador to the United Nations Susan Rice Susan Rice yeah hmm. She went. She went to South Sudan, and she visited some places, some states, and she, they, uh, they give her, they give her a report about the killing since 2009, 2010, 2011. She saw it. So it's not easy to make a country right now. It uh, is a country going to be a failed country. Many, many people are going to die. And uh, and uh, and uh, I don't know what the America will will do, what the European countries will do, but 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 uh, they support a wrong direction. Long time, we send a letter. You remember, we send appeal to the permanent uh, members of the United Nations to postpone a referendum because we were knowing that such uh, problems will arise up and will happen. And the border between the north and the south will cause a lot of problems, and many people will die, will die there. So it's, it's, it's now is it's an issue, it's a concern. We got relatives back home, and I, now, we I still don't, don't understand how a creating a border between north and south that is separating the two makes the problem worse. First, the, during the war time. When John Graham was fighting, John the, Graham, now yes. he was the leader of the SPLA, the leader of the SPLA, SPLA. which was mostly Dinka. Yeah, and he, he he brought people from Nuba Mountain. And John Graham, by the way, was killed in a suspicious helicopter crash. Yeah, nobody knows. Well, they say uh, it was a natural it, it was, death. It was, but it was a helicopter crash of Khartoum. No, no, it's a, a helicopter of Uganda. Oh, not, not a Khartoum. Okay. Not a cartoon. It was a helicopter from Uganda. Is uh, the Ugandan are uh, uh, maybe the the one who involved in that killing? Nobody knows. Hmm. Yes. But uh, Mangisto said the helicopter was belonged to him. But later on, they know that it was not a, a helicopter from the from the office of president of Uganda. So they were uh, not true hmm. during that time. People find out later. Uh, the problem here, the border, the state, the, 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 the tribes who are living in the border, uh, some of them are from the north. They were in the south. And people of the south, they vote for separation, and they forget them. You know? So those, 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 those uh, tribes, they are not paying the consequence, the, uh, the consequence of the, of the separation. Because the government of Khartoum cannot let them be allied with the South mm -hmm. for many years. That, that is the problem. Uh, Southerners who live in the border, they will, they will be suffering because the border will be a problem. Now, the, people, the Sudanese I met yeah. are not violent thugs. They're peaceful people that you can't tell from an ordinary natural born citizen. And yet you come from a, a people that are, are just going crazy, killing each other. What is the difference? Are, are, you, are, are you remarkably that different from your, your families and, and friends back home? Do you love peace that much more than, than all of the other, so, so many there, so many who are there? Or, or, or is there something that makes good people, peaceful people violent over there? Well, if you look, if you look at the history of the people of Southern Sudan, history showing people of Southern Sudan, they are still living in stone ages. There is backwards. People are left backwards. You know, that's a natural consequence of violence. Yes, it's, there is uh, no. The South was left so since let, let independent. Me just, let me just fill off, philosophize a little bit about that. Civilization is people sharing their talents with each other in a 
peaceful environment that is not killing each other. We're able to invest in education and uh, we can send a child to school for 20 years and not worry that all of that investment is going to end because of a sniper. Uh, we can we can build things. It takes time building all kinds of wonderful things without worrying that a, a bomb is going to, from your neighbor is going to come and destroy it. But in a violent situation, where you don't have civilization. You you have uh, the the technology cannot take root. So you have people bombing each other back into the Stone Age, as they say. The, uh, we, we, we asked for a separation. We were not supposed to ask for separation at this time, at this movement. We were supposed to ask for a road, for clean water, for food, for uh, education, for school, for agriculture. We were supposed to ask for, for things that can bring us up to be a nation. You cannot just create a nation from crop or from nowhere. We are not a nation. We are tribes. And those tribes, they don't, they don't believe one another. They, they don't accept one another. There is a school will let them, education will let them accept one another. If we create a good curriculum, that will bring you know, a nation. I, that will I, make a nation. I, I think a, a nation. school will not do that. Okay. But Christianity will. Uh, but there's a lot of Christians there. Why? Are, are, are the Christians violent too in Sudan? Christians, they were violent long time ago. And that is why the first, the grandparents of the United States, they ran away from Europe. They came here because of violence. That's right. So, so Europe, Christianity, Europe, so Christianity, Christianity Europe, will, not, will, too. Never, will never solve that problem. And that is why the United States put uh, in a constitution you can worship. Huh? The, what is what what is the freedom of religion? Wait a minute. What did is you, did you just the answer? Say yes. Christianity cannot be the answer because cannot be answered because because, got, because Europe was uh, no no was not Christian. at all no 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 I just answered your question that way but because we got tribe they got their own religion African religions Afri uh, Muslims. Uh, Christians, oh, all, all those. You, you, in other words, you're saying mm -hmm. we cannot impose Christianity on these people and make we that We cannot the impose. Oh, of course not. We cannot. We will do it like America. You can practice any religion or not practice yeah. a religion. That I, is I didn't. When I said that Christianity will solve the problem, I did not mean uh, Christianity at sword point. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I meant even America. They are using the. And, and you know, here's another thing. thing. You, you, you're. There, there are certain Christian principles that, here that a lot of Christians in America don't understand are Christian principles. The idea of freedom, the idea of allowing freedom of religion, freedom of speech, these are in the Bible. They're in America because they were in the Bible. And, uh, and, and very often People, like e even atheists here in America that reject the Bible and yet embrace these principles not knowing they're Christian principles. Uh, uh, I suppose if we, it's dangerous to tell them because then they'll become violent. <laughs> but, but you asked before about what, what is there in the Bible that uh, supports uh, free, this freedom of religion that allows Muslims to, to practice to be here. under yeah. under the Christianity. So let me, let me tell you just a little bit about where it is in the Bible. The, there's nowhere in the Bible that suggests that anyone ought to be killed for not believing in God. Almost every other religion has something like that, but not Christianity. The closest that comes to that is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 13, where it says now. If someone comes and, and starts leading, uh, preaching another god and uh, leads people to worship another god and to serve another god, then you shall kill him. Violence. But think about what that means. 
there's nothing in the Bible that says merely believing in another God is a crime or should be punished. Absolutely nowhere. But there's this difference about serving another God. What does that mean? Well, if you believe in a God that tells you to kill people who don't agree with you so that you can go to heaven, or that says that you should sacrifice your children and throw them up into the red-hot arms of your god Baal after you've uh, set a fire under those brass arms to be burned to death, that's a crime. And God's laws uh, drew the line at criminal action. And, and that's the same place where our Supreme Court draws the line. There's a case where some Indians in the West, uh, it was part of their religion to smoke peyote. And uh, the Supreme Court says, now look, you can, you can believe in the virtues of peyote all you want to. Peyote, by the way, is a, mm -hmm. a drug like marijuana. You can believe that if you want to, but you can't smoke it. That's against the law. We have drug laws. So you can, you can believe anything you want, can't commit a crime. Now, it is true that uh, different laws or different religions define different actions as crimes. And, but, and so that's where, uh, that's where we're fortunate to have our crimes defined by Christian uh, scriptures, even though most people don't know it. And yet, it's all of our people with all of our different faiths that decide what our laws are going to be. And the pilgrims came over here with all this Bible study that showed that explained freedom of religion and uh, and yet gave the vote to uh, to the non church members, even though it meant the church members would be outvoted. That's that's the American system and it's the biblical system. You have one minute to uh, close. Okay. Uh, religion is not a problem in Sudan. We Sudanese, they get a religion, they get custom, they get, uh, they get uh, traditions. And Sudanese, they respect one another. If you go to any Sudanese house, whether it's a Muslim or a Christian, there is respect there because they, they believe in their uh, tradition more than their religion. Their religion is something that they differ. Muslim are Muslim, Christian are Christian, but still they live together and they respect one another. That is what I know so far. So there is no war between the Christian and Muslim in Sudan and here in America. Interesting.